I was teaching class yesterday. Let's see what were we were doing. And I totally forgot we never went over it. So we good? Is it going? There we go. Okay. So just to get cracking here. Um, so uh, if you go back to the ZBrush or the Pavlovich workshop on the Pixelic channel on YouTube, and I guess I can go ahead and link that here. Um, we went over knurling where we basically made a polyplane, and uh, I guess we can just do that real quick. So if we go over here to the plane 3D here, make it a polyplane, go into make poly mesh 3D, go in here to geometry, just hit reconstruct to get however many squares you want, delete higher, so we just have a plane with squares on it. You can go down here to initialize as well uh, when you just drag out the primitive. And we just basically filled these things with a pyramid. Um, you can also go through here and do like poly group poly loop and tap alt. Um, as, you, as you tap and then tap alt, it'll go ahead and just cycle through different um, polygroup colors, so then you can just make these all one polygroup like that. And hold on just a second. There we go. Um, so that's how we did that. And then for the knurling part, we went ahead and just duplicated off this plane here. So I'm just going to hit clone. And now we can go here to geometry. I'm just going to keep hitting reconstruct until we get a very simple plane. Uh, and then we'll delete higher again. We're going to mask, hold down control and drag out, mask that middle, control tap to invert, hit W, and to use the transpose line, control drag to unmask, and then we're just gonna go over here. If you turn on X, that's gonna be your activate symmetry across the X symmetry here. We're gonna go to bridge, two points, here to here. Hold on, let me use my mouse. There we go, here to here. And then we've got our pyramid there. And then now we have uh, our polyplane here that we can now go in here to uh, BZM. Z modeler brush, hover over a face, do insert nano mesh. Uh, we're going to do a poly group, so we're going to do one poly group here and then one poly group here with different nano meshes. Well, same nano mesh, different settings. Uh, hit M to grab your nano mesh, but before we do that, we're going to grab our cylinder and drag it out, and you're going to see these are all kind of just twisted all over the place. You can go down here to your nano mesh and say, hey, you know what, do alignment to normal, and that'll kind of make them. Um, work correctly. Uh, if you have no alignment though, you can go over here to your modified topology and you can say align edge and that'll go ahead and align all your edges, which might make it a little bit easier. And then um, we will, yeah, I don't want to replace that. Let's undo that. And then without anything on there, now that you know what it's doing, let's go ahead and do an align edge. And then we're going to hit M and then drag out our cone right here and then go over here to nano mesh and we'll do our to zero out your rotations basically we'll do fill at a scale of one and then on the other poly group we'll drag it out and we'll go to index zero we're going to copy uh, what were we doing here uh, let's see yeah copy and then paste that into index one and then you can do uh, an, an x offset uh, is it a y offset there you go we'll do a y offset of one and then if we turn nano mesh off, we can grab these middle cubes right here, turn it back on. Well, hold on. Let's do nano mesh off. Grab these middle cubes here. Hit F to frame, and then we, you know, make your document size the right size, frame it, and then uh, turn your knurling back on, and that'll go ahead and give you a tiling alpha. Hey guys, thanks for showing up. I'm just going back over the knurling that we did earlier. Um, if you go back to the YouTube channel here, you'll see, uh, well, what video is it? I want to say video broadcast number 10. We went over knurling here. Uh, I'm kind of re-going back over it because I forgot to mention one thing. I was teaching yesterday and we were talking, knurling came up again. Knurling's a really big deal in the 3D world for some reason all of a sudden. And, um, well, let's go ahead and just, we'll, we'll finish this out real quick, just in case you missed that broadcast. So we're going to go over here to document, uh, turn off proportional, let's do a 1024, hit tab 1024, resize our document. Would you like to resize the document? Yes. Um, if you want to make sure you see the edges, take this zoom and just zoom out, grab your plane here, and then we're going to go into uh, turn down a mesh off, 
I'm going to grab the center polygons here, hit F to frame. It's this little frame button down here. Uh, turn nano mesh back on and uh, then control shift tap to bring back those outer edge rings and then you can go over here to alpha grab dock and that'll go ahead and grab a tiling alpha for you that you can then you know export uh, onto let's throw it on the desktop here and now we have an alpha that we can just tile through as a surface noise or any sort of displacement any height that we want um, what you can also do Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. We're just re-going back over some knurling there uh, that we did in broadcast number a couple broadcasts ago. Uh, so if I want to get my document size back, and you know, if I always have this one open and this side open here, I can go over here to documents and then to turn on W size and hit new documents. And then no, I don't want to save changes. That'll just ensure that my document fills up the working space that's available to it. And then we can go over here. So we did the tiling knurling, but one thing we didn't talk about is if you just have a cylinder, and this should be obvious, but just in case, if you go to, uh, you can make a poly mesh 3D, and if you want to do a poly group on this side here, you can hold down Alt and tag it, and then you can do poly group, a single poly, and then again, you can tap and just cycle through Alt. You can also go through here and do uh, poly groups by group by normals, and you can click that, and you know, you can change this angle depending on you know, if you have a bevel on here, let's do a bevel edge loop complete here. And let's say this is all one poly group, I just hit control W. And then if you do group by normals, um, if it doesn't pick up that little edge there, you can just change that max angle down a bit. And there you go, it'll grab it for you. So if you do have a shape like this and you want to insert knurling on just the green part here, you can go to uh, Z Modeler Brush, BZM, hit space bar. We're going to insert nano mesh on. Um, uh, polygroup all, which will just choose one polygroup here. And just like we did, you know, actually let's hit, let's put a cylinder on here so we can talk about this again. So we've got a cylinder on here. And if these are, these seem to be arranged uh, perfectly fine as far as like, uh, you know, going in the same direction. If they're not, um, or remember, you can go over here to either a line edge and that'll ensure that they do, or under the nano mesh properties here you can go to alignment and say align to normal or try any of these other aligns to see what works for you but these seem fine so again i'm going to grab my um, square here and if we want them to fill each one of those holes we can go to fill with a size of one make sure you zero out your rotations here's the rotations on five there we go um, if you did want to um, offset these all you would have to do if we turn our nano mesh off we can go through here and you know what, let's make this a different poly group. So I'm going to tap. So I'm hovering over an edge, poly group, poly loop, tap, tap, alt. And then uh, we'll do a separate one for this one too. So tap, tap, alt. So we're going to do purple and orange. Now when I turn this on, just purple will be filled because remember when we originally put it on there, we did insert nano mesh poly group all. So now we can do this one here, which we will now do as uh, well, we can just copy. We'll go back to index zero. We're going to copy, go to index one, paste. We've got the same settings. And now if we go over here, hopefully to the offsets here, that's X, Y of one, offset of one. And now I've got um, knurling that's offset a little bit on the other side here. What's that Z offset? Interesting. We might have to play that Z offset just a little bit as well, maybe. Mm hmm hmm. X offset, Y offset's correct. Let's see. Oh, okay, you know what? Let's take this, do this one aligned to normal, and let's change that Y offset back to zero and see if X offset will work. So yeah, I probably should have just aligned, um, aligned to normal as it is, just to kind of make ensure that these are all correct. Um, but if you do, once you do get this all set up correctly, if you do want to make all of these into a mesh, go into inventory, do one to mesh, one to mesh, and now you can do control shift click, and that's actual geometry. You can control shift click, invert that, and then, oops, there's my menu. Um, I'm just going to do a quick split hidden, which for you guys will be under subtool, split. You can do split mass points, split the parts. Uh, split similar parts, whatever you want to do. And now you've got those two separate knurling pieces there you can kind of play with. Go to solo mode. And there you go. 
Exactly. Pretty gnarly. Um, <laughs> that is true. Yeah, it's like a cool, uh, cool little bracelet, little rocker bracelet. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I hit that up just because we talked about the tiling knurling with the alpha in here, which you could, you know, apply UVs to this thing and tile it. But you can also just throw knurling on there and um, it's a little less destructive if you did want to have knurling pattern on there and didn't want to apply it to your mesh or anything like that. It's not, I mean, it's, you can always go back and change these things since it's actual geometry. So anyway, you can also store a layer and store a morph target if it was applied to your mesh. You just don't have to subdivide uh, your mesh up a lot to get this kind of uh, look. So let's go ahead and delete all. Cool. And everybody good? Let me look through here real quick. Hey, da, 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 da. <laughs> All right, so let's see where we left off. Uh, let me check here. Streaming, uh, b -b 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 array mesh. We'll get into when we do creature stuff, I think. Uh, oh, we can do some high-res array mesh stuff whenever we get down her spine. I was going to use a ray mesh here, so if I load her up here, you can see we can probably use a ray mesh like anything where you have a repeating pattern. It doesn't matter if it spirals or twists or goes from thick to thin. You can use a curve brush for this as well, but you can also use a ray mesh or you can use snapshot and kind of duplicate down and just repeat that duplication here. Um, we kind of, let's see, so if I go up here to the top, we have, we stopped with our gloves, I believe. And then we went here. Um, I did go back and redo these gloves. So basically what I did was, if you have our original here, um, I masked one area, and then I masked another, and I masked another. So she's got these middle, the top of these middle two fingers here, and then the whole bottom is one piece, and then this whole top is another piece. Um, we can build in these extra pieces later. I'm going to keep this thing around as reference, so if I need to, I can just kind of like do Shift S and Shift S, and we can just kind of see oops, yeah, where these things need to go. And I can also have the other, the lower res glove that I end up Z remeshing here, uh, just so I have the opportunity to do panel loops and panel groups to get seams in here. It might be a little overkill, depending on what you're working on. You may want to just subdivide your mesh up and use like a Damien standard to kind of cut in a seam and then standard brush around that or in a mask and inflate. A lot of different ways you can tackle this. Um, like I think I said last time, I've just been a real, on a real jag of just building everything I don't know why. You know, sometimes it's a waste of time. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes I just do it just because. But um, let's go ahead and I guess we can just finish out these gloves. Uh, if we take a real quick look at what we've got going on here, uh, let me go ahead and get rid of her helmet here. And I think the rest of her armor is on, yeah, one subtool here. So we're very, uh, I, I guess, slowly uh, working our way down this tech suit here. So this one we have these areas here that kind of go above that rib tech suit here. So if I select this tech suit, this is all built out and we go into solo mode here. We built all this last time, I believe, or we just went through and did a bunch of panel loop techniques. And now when I hit D, which is our dynamic preview here, um, we'll have, this will be, uh, you know, it smooths correctly. We can go through here and sculpt this out and add detail as needed as we go forward. Um, but this is a little bit busy, which uh, it's not too bad because you know, we can, you know, these, these seams are pretty tight. Um, so let's do shifty here. But uh, just to kind of get rid of some of that busyness here, we're just going to be covering it up with a little bit of uh, plain stuff here. And there's some boots that'll be fun to work on like this. And then these armor pieces here, which again, will have armor over them. And then we will be putting this. Let's go streaming female, high res, let's go to the armor. And then over that armor, we have, wait for it, the tech suit. So she's gonna fit right up in there. You can see there's her body here and then her tech suit over that. So she'll kind of fit in there and then she'll be able to do all sorts of cool stuff. So let's go ahead and go to subtool, delete all, because we don't need that sitting there and go back here. And I'm going to go all the way to the very top here. We're going to go back to the glove. So with all these subtools on, I can select the subtool. And with the subtool selected, I can hit that eyeball off. 
and then tap the nameplate just to turn that eyeball on. If I don't tap the nameplate and I turn the eyeball on, with everything off and the subtool with an eyeball off and you turn the eyeball on, it's going to turn everything on. And that's a feature. That's, an, that's just an easy way to kind of select something and isolate it, as opposed to going into um, solo mode and working. If you want to just work on a few things without solo, you can turn that on by hitting the nameplate and then just turn on a couple different things and it'll just show you those things here. Um, so we'll tap the, the glove here, we'll tap the eyeball on, um, tap the eyeball off, tap the nameplate, and then underneath I know is where her glove geo is. And now we've just got these two we can kind of look at. And you can see if I turn on transparency, and you can turn on ghost if you want to as well. Um, we're going to put these, uh, just a little bit of detail on here, these little screw port things. And uh, let's tap the mesh here. There we go. With the local on, it'll just circle around the last place you touched, which is really important when you're working on gloves. If we have this off, and whoa, and we're working, um, and we're trying to like work on a finger, and we're rotating around, it's going to be way off my screen. So go ahead and tap local, hit F to frame, and start working. Um, another thing you can do is when you're only working on one object that you know you can mirror and weld, let's go ahead and we've got this one selected. I'm going to go out of X symmetry mode by tapping X, which is just transform, turning this activate on and off. And we'll do control shift drag over this one. Now, if you want to get rid of something, tap Alt as you control shift and that'll delete it. Um, or you can grab this side and that'll hide that side. It doesn't delete it. it. Visibility hides it. And then we'll do a geometry modify topology delete hidden. And then same thing for this one here. Hold down Alt. And uh, what's this one here? Let's go into solo. Oh, we need to turn off X. Alt delete hidden. So now we just have one glove to worry about. We don't need one floating back here to take care of. We just could do one glove on one side and then later mirror it, mirror and weld. And uh, okay, let's see, everybody good still? Uh, I haven't tried the plugin scene manager. I don't really have, I mean, I, I've had scenes that uh, have a bunch of stuff in them, but really, I, I, will, I will check it out. I, you know, I also have a key a uh, key program that I'm still investigating uh, as far as like having when I hit Alt or Alt S or Alt D and stuff, I can, uh, you know, have that show up on the screen. Uh, but I'm still kind of looking at options for that. Um, I have QI Lite or something like that I'm, or Pro I'm checking out. Um, but yeah, so here we go. I'm going to do Shift S. And oh, speaking of plugins, um, <clears throat> if you go to Let's see, YouTube. Joseph Drust has a really cool plugin. The knurling thing reminded me um, about this. So I went ahead and did a really quick nano tile thing. You can check it out. So that's using Joseph Drust plugin here. So we go to Z plugin and we do, uh, if you load the, if you install this, you can go through here and it has a ton of tiling options and it's for tiling for sculpting uh, using wrap modes uh, when you sculpt and also tiling nano mesh which really hinges on making sure that you have that random array turned off um, when you tile and then also having the padding and also having the right correct wrap mode and this takes care of all of that manual work so you can do it manually um, but this nano tile and also as far as baking your maps it works really well so check that out and uh, if you Google ZBrush Central Nano Tile, here's the, the ZBrush Central thread here, where you can just grab it. And uh, that's that Nano Tile plugin Joseph just made. Very cool, very, very helpful. And uh, I'm just going to go through here and do Shift S for these screenshots here. So we've got this one, this one. And we'll do one for the sides. And this isn't really important. I didn't spend a whole lot of time, obviously, concepting this thing out. So there'll be a lot of room for um, improvement as we move forward here. And also, let me, I'm going to load up, right click. Come on. Come on. There we go. I'm going to load up some reference here. I'm going to use Quadro Reference Viewer, and I'm going to see. So load up some images by default here. I'm going to auto save, 
add content, close that preset. I'm gonna see if I have a glove because there were some motocross um, gloves I was using. Uh, let's see, streaming. That'd probably be under Robo Viking. There we go. Female armor reference. Female reference. Is there some glove? Yeah, glove reference. So there was some cool reference from, um, like, uh, yeah, motocross. Basically, you know, some really. Let me see if I can drag this over. There we go. So this kind of reference here. So this is where I kind of got the different little ways to kind of break up and add little cool knobs and stuff to it. So I'm going to have that up as we work on this glove here and we talk about seams and possibly even tiling some texture through there and I'm not doing a specific glove but just kind of um, a cool glove hopefully um, let's see everybody cool and if I miss a question or anything just uh, throw back down just keep asking and I'll try and pick it up I'm just kind of doing quick glances over there so we got this glove here, and you know what? We actually have another piece. I'm going to turn everything on, and then um, go out of solo mode here. I'm going to alt-tap this little plate here, shoot that to the top so I know where it is, and then I can just turn all these things back on, like we talked about. And then, uh, now that I know where it is. And so, we'll start with this, and we went through here, and we zero mesh this thing, which is looking good. Um, if I want to, I can go ahead and panel loops this thing, so I can go into solo mode here, and we can go into like geometry, uh, edge loops, panel loops, and you can change these panel loop properties to kind of get what you want. This is a little thick, so we'd probably want to like, you know, turn the thickness down quite a bit and uh, maybe turn that polish down because we're losing a lot of detail. So we'll turn that down to zero and that'll just go ahead and panel loops this out. So then if we have double on, we can hold that control shift and tap control shift A and that'll just give us a one, um, you know, it's a very thin panel loop here, but it'll go ahead and add in what well, settings we got five loops with this bevel profile and it'll meet in the middle as we've talked about before when we did panel loops here it'll kind of loop around here we can control shift drag to invert that and you can see what it's doing here um, that's a very quick way to get geo and if you hit D to do your dynamic preview you've already got you know nice clean panel lines in here uh, however that's not going to be what I'm going to be doing I don't think although that is pretty quick hmm maybe I do want to do that let me think real quick because I can also do it manually and by doing it manually it gives me a little bit more control if I want to you know how thick I want these things to go how much I want to bevel it in but really I'm just gonna be doing the panel stuff anyways let's try panel loops and we'll play with that a little bit more. So the bevel here, I'm going to crank that bevel up just a bit and also change the thickness up just a bit, hit panel loops. And you're going to see when I hit a control Z to undo, um, if I hit panel loops, it kind of bumps out. If you change your elevation to zero, it'll uh, it still bumps out. If you change it to negative 100, it won't bump out. It'll actually, whatever your top surface is, it will stay there. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, let's make sure nothing weird is going on, on the inside. Control shift, control shift A. Pretty cool. Now there's a lot of different panel loop options you can play with as well. Um, if you turn off double and you do panel loops, that'll give you the same kind of look. But if you go through here and smooth, it'll actually be all connected in here. So if you did want to have these things as one solid mesh, um, you can do that. And if you can still go through here and like, you know, let's do this. We'll do a really quick stroke menu over here. We'll drag that over. We'll hold down shift to open up all our curve buttons here. We're going to curve. Uh, let's just do a frame of mesh border. Then we can go to brush BC, brush curve tube here. Make our brush size pretty small, really small. There we go. And now you can kind of, you can still frame this with piping and stuff like that. We can tap off, off our mesh away from our curve to kind of set that in. And if you wanted to, you can go ahead and like split mass points, sub tool, uh, split menu and then you can go through here and you can dial in the inflate. Now you're going to see when I inflate this down, okay, it worked, but boy, it's touchy. You can inflate it down just a bit and get it smaller. So you're still able to do all of that. Let's go ahead and delete that. Even though, um, if we go into solo mode, actually when I separated that off, let's see if it kept Oh, it did. Okay, so we'll go ahead and delete hidden. 
I'm going to solo mode here. Um, it still went ahead and allowed us to uh, do a bunch of stuff, but also get the seam in there, which we can then, you know, we can go through here, either add piping or go through here and cut in an edge loop and inflate that if we wanted to. Um, all that good stuff. So in this one, and when I, unfortunately, when I went and did the piping and split that off, I got, I got rid of my undos here. So let's see if we can go, let's isolate. That should also give us uh, no interior space because we turned double off here. Let me think, let me think. I want to pop this off. Or I can just turn double on and have them all as separate subtools that I can merge later, which is probably what I'm going to do just for a slight little bit more flexibility. Um, and I also like having back faces. I don't like working with uh, in ZBrush without back faces on. So let's go ahead and let's do a delete all. And let's load in that last text that we had. There we go. And then really quickly, we'll hit X. Control shift alt delete hidden and we're back where we started. So we'll take this one here. Let's do control shift. Now nah, we'll let panel loops do the heavy lifting and then we'll just split it up. So we'll go to geometry panel loops, drop our thickness down, turn our polish off just down to zero. Um, also this open circle here too. If you have polish on and you do panel loops, um, if you do close circle, that'll maintain your volume a little bit better. Just like when you're doing your deformation polish by features. Uh, same principle there. So you can do open circle, close circle. If you turn to zero, that'll get rid of the polish and then we'll go back to negative 100 elevation. And we'll make that a little thicker, a little more bevel. Just kind of going through and dialing in. There we go. I think that'll work. Um, it's doing something weird around here. So let's go take a look at that. Oops, hit a button. There we go. Um, another navigation you can do is the right click navigation. So if you hold down right click, you know, alt to pan and move. And then if you zoom in, that'll zoom in on that, whatever point you click. So if I click up here and right click navigation, it'll also, you know, um, rotate around that point here. And if you just right click, it'll rotate around whatever point you're hovering over. So that's, a, that's another option as opposed to touching your mesh and having local turned on just in case. Also looks like I need to do a collapse poly loop here. And looks like I undid too many times. There we go. F to frame. And let's go check out this little pinky over here. So when this is going through here, let's also change this poly group here. We'll do control W just to make it more obvious. That's a different poly group. There we go. So this is inheriting that simple fix. Hover over face. We're going to do poly group, a single poly. Tap, tap shift. That'll inherit it. And then to go ahead and make that green. Cool, cool. Everybody good? Oh, thanks for all the links. There's all my stuff. Um, and yeah, if you go and check out all that... Um, all my old YouTube videos and stuff. There's a ton of ZBrush stuff in there. And if you're new to ZBrush, go to the Pixelogic channel. They have Z Classroom. Um, I'm on there a little bit on some more dated stuff. And then also you can download the trial and check that out. And there's other, and on, even on this Twitch stream here, there's a ton of other uh, people doing uh, really, really cool stuff on their Twitch stream. So definitely check that out. Um, but before we split this up, let's make sure these things are where we want it. Let's go ahead and pull that out a little bit. Because, you know, once we split these things off, we're going to have to do this twice, basically. So before we split this off, let's make sure these curves are kind of where we want them. And if you move them a lot, you can do a Z remesh, keep groups. You can hold on shift and smooth those, those out just to kind of average those vertices around. I think that'll work here. Cool. And then eh, this isn't. Mm, that's not great. Let's go ahead and hover over that edge, and we're going to do a split edge here. We're going to split that edge right there, and then we're going to hover over that edge and do a delete, and we'll delete those two edges there. And that'll just kind of give us a straighter line across there. Uh, it's not, I'm not worried about animation. I'm just worried about, you know, getting this thing 
um, to smooth correctly once I do panel loops and just kind of ensuring that there's nice clean cuts here. So for this uh, one here, I'm gonna do bridge two points. So I'm gonna hover over a point, click that one, and we're just gonna bridge those two. And I think it can, it can keep that poly group here. If I wanted to, I'd also probably put in maybe another little cut here to kind of alleviate that. Or we can actually, let's go ahead and, now that we bridge that, let's see if we can collapse this edge and see if it's fine here. Oops. Here, here, eh. We'll keep that. Okay. So, everybody good? Everybody good? Awesome. Thanks for showing up, everybody. We're just kind of going through and making uh, gloves. It doesn't really matter if you have a triangle. A uh, question uh, doesn't matter if it's a triangle. Um, it doesn't as long as when you hit panel loops, it panel loops correctly. So if you look in here and, you know, it split this up fine. We do control shift, control shift A. You're going to see it did a fine job of grouping off. So it's not a really huge deal. Um, if you're really worried about, you know, animation and you're going to have a camera right there in the middle of your fingers and, you know, triangles can sometimes behave a little erratically on animation when words are being animated or smoothing. If you do control D, um, it can sometimes pinch on smoothing depending on topology. I'm not concerned about it because, again, this is just for high res and uh, it's not for animation. But um, even on high res stuff, if you want to alleviate some pinching, sometimes it's better to get rid of some triangles. But in this case, I think we're fine. So, okay, let's do this for real. Uh, we got panel loops here. We got our elevation at negative 100. So when we do panel loops, it stays there. Uh, I got a nice thick uh, panel loops line, which is uh, also what I was looking for here. And at any point, I can also go in here with my Z modeler brush. We can do... Uh, like Q-Mesh Polygroup All, and then if you start Q-Meshing this one here, it'll add an edge loop and start adding thickness, but if you hold down Shift, it'll just pull along that surface normal. So if you want to make these thicker or thinner, you definitely can do that. Easily is the key here, and I think we're good. So if we do D to do our dynamic preview, it'll go ahead and preview that. I think that'll be fine. So I think we're good to go. I think this will be a nice glove that we can start working with. So long story short, we finally have a workable glove. Uh, and then we can start detailing it up. So, and like I said, I've got my motocross reference here. Make sure I'm not covering up anything cool I want to see. Eh, good enough. Okay, so if we want to, let's go ahead and... Best way to do this. So if you want to split these things up so they're separate subtools, you can work on them separately. A um, couple different ways you can do that. You can do control shift, tap a polygroup. Now remember, that's just the polygroup. If you want to see everything associated with this object that's not vert welded to another one, do control shift A, which is visibility grow all. So down here in your visibility menu, close, close, visibility, uh, grow all is control shift A. And just like in anything in ZBrush, if you're new to it, hover over it, that'll give you the hotkey, the if that has a hotkey associated with it, as well as what it is, and then hold down control, and that'll give you a little bit more information. As you kind of roll over here, you can hold down control, and it'll be like a little help help file. Uh, just built into the interface there. And okay, I think we're good. And okay, so let's do Control Shift A. And then what we can do now at this point is now that we have everything hidden, if we do Control Shift Drag, there's the invert of that visibility. You can do Split Hidden. Um, you can also do if you don't want to, you know, Control Shift tap something, Control Shift A. You can also do it with uh, just uh, showing just one poly group. So if you are a polygon here, so if you do Control Shift and do a visibility just to grab those little bits, and then Control Shift A, that'll go ahead and grab all of that as well. So you can also go over here to the split menu. You see if we do a group split, that's going to split all my poly groups apart, which is not what I want. It would be safe to do that if we went through here to poly groups, auto groups. And that went ahead and just gave me a poly group for everything. So now if I do control shift, it'll grab all of it here. But then I lose the flexibility of having my interior spaces here. Um, why that's useful is if you wanted to go through here and like say frame every single open poly group, you can do control shift tap this inside one. And you're going to see that gives us access to all of the poly groups uh, from the inside of those meshes. Um, so now at this point, you can do control shift X to expand and now you know you had five loops when we did our panel loops here if we go back up here when we did our panel loops there's five loops there so if you do control shift x one two three four five now you're at the edge the exact edge of where the other poly loops are poly groups are so you can control shift grab there's all of the outside poly groups so instead of going through here and going okay 
you select this one, control shift, control shift drag, select this one, select this one, and then inverting. You can go select this one, control shift X, one, two, three, four, five, and then drag, control shift drag, and that'll grab those polygroups. If you're looking to like frame your meshes in a certain way or isolate polygroups in a certain way. Um, if you go back to the subtool menu, split, we can do split the similar parts, split the parts, and that's just going to split everything that's not vert welded into its own polygroup. So that's probably pretty safe to do. So uh, not group split, but you can isolate these, control shift A, split, split hidden, or we'll go down one, and on this one we'll do split two parts, and now we've got this one in its own subtool, this one in its own subtool. So we'll go out of solo mode here. We're going to turn off the eyeball, and we'll just turn these eyeballs on for these three here. We've got our reference up here, and by reference, just the original sculpt, which is right here. We have that sitting there, um, but now we can start detailing this thing out however we'd like. So looking at my reference, uh, they got these little plastic knuckle things going on. Let's make some of that stuff real quick, and we'll see if we can find the best way to kind of make these things. Now, because these, when I zero mesh this thing, it kind of zero mesh the buckles in there because I didn't like, what I would normally do is go through here and mask these out and then pop them off and then continue to refine those before I get to a point where I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, I just zero meshed it. So it kind of build it in there. So you can go through here with smooth and just kind of smooth these down because you know, and it's alt tap because you know, we're going to go through here and start um, detailing this out even more. Uh, another thing, I have this kind of embedded in here too, so we might be, let's go into clay brush here, and uh, because I'm working with very thin meshes now, I'm gonna make sure when I go into my brush settings here, auto masking, there we go. Um, so if I have my clay brush here, and I'm clay brushing away, and it's like, pretty sweet and then you go around to the other side here in the solo mode it's really pulling through my mesh which is not uh, necessarily what I want I go over here to all the brushes you're using and just turn on this back face and that way you can ensure that as you're brushing on this top face here it's not pulling through the other side and we can just alt tap here and just kind of brush these back up smooth and then brush it back up and even though this is low poly, we can, you know, obviously use your sculpting tools. You could even hit D to do your dynamic preview and still sculpt through just to kind of make sure everything's working cool. And then shift D, like so. Um, question, where did you study? I, oh boy, um, way back in the day, I went to Texas State Technical College in Waco, Texas, where I learned... Uh, how to do, this was 99, 2000, so I learned how to do shockwave animations. Uh, we had our jazz drives, our zip drives. We had, uh, what was big at the time? Like interactive CD, CD burners were brand new. So you, you could burn, you know, these little interactive, you click on the, what was it, shockwave and dream weaver before Adobe bought them, I think. All these sort of interactive kind of 2D stuff in Photoshop and had a 3D Studio Max class for a little bit of 3D work. And then I went to Ringling School of Art and Design, now Ringling College, and that's where I got my bachelor's degree in animation. So I got a associate's degree in integrated digital imaging in Waco, Texas, and then I went to Sarasota, Florida and got my bachelor's in computer animation at Ringling College. And then the rest is history, but yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean, oh, geez, it was, it was quite a, quite a while ago. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, because the CD burners just come out. My first computer, back when I very first started, I was going through the magazines and you had to buy these um, SGI machines, the Octanes, and uh, they had 512 meg of RAM and they were like $15,000. And that was actually cheaper and they were starting to get cheaper at that point. They used to be even more expensive than that. Um, just to do any kind of 3D work because computers back then were not super robust. I remember working on uh, playing on my mom's, my stepmom's Mac, and it was I was playing like Doom at 640 by 480 on the middle of the screen, and um, Seventh Guest at a very again very small screen. It kind of was came with a computer. 
Um, any tips for self-taught aspiring 3D artists? Uh, man, the world is your oyster. Everything is at your fingertips, really. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't go to school because the most valuable thing I got from going to school was um, the faculty is really good um, at Ringling. And I would say, by all means, go to Ringling if you'd like. But um, also working with the students there was really important because you're going to be around them all the time. And that kind of gets you acclimated to the kind of teamwork environment as well as learning how to learn and also learning from others is a super important. So I learned a ton from just going to Ringling and just being around the students there. And, you know, the super talented uh, students really kind of pushed me um, to excel as much as I could. Let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and smooth this out. You're also going to see in the bottom here, I cut in some lines here, which we may just Damien standard that. Um, anyway, but yeah, you, I mean, geez, there's so many resources available now. When I was going to school, the internet was not super chock full of technique, uh, per se. There was a couple really old ones. Um, I think Bay Ray was pretty big at the time. And uh, Jeff Unai had some cool stuff, too, if I remember. Um, but yeah, nowadays, geez, there's a million gum roads. There's a million, even the the companies themselves are really good. Like Pixel Logic's really good with their Z Classroom for anything you can find. You can usually uh, do all that stuff. <laughs> uh, do you remember the time when smoothing was only uh, Bezier smoothing? Uh, yep. Yeah, we had we started with um, what was it? NURBS, non-uniform rational B splines. I still remember that, but I don't really use them all that much. And um, but yeah, still NURBS modeling is really important. And I, you know. Doing the NURBS modeling made my transition into uh, other CAD programs a little bit easier as well, just kind of that methodology and workflow. So, uh, but polygons is my poison of choice. Cool, cool. <laughs> I remember I was living in Louisville, Kentucky, and my first 3D quote unquote was. Uh, I was in grade school. I went to a magnet school, so it was a little bit weird where we were, what we were kind of working on, but we were basically plotting points in 3D by typing in the vertex coordinates and then having the ability to kind of rotate around. So you'd plot the points and then you, it would connect the line between the points. You could draw like a little house in 3D and then you could kind of rotate around it. But I was like, I didn't do it. The teacher did. And it was, I was like six or something. Um, uh, no one's good. Sure. Yeah, there's a ton of really, really good uh, resources available to you for the aspiring 3D artist who wants to be self-taught. Uh, really, really good stuff here. Okay, so let's go ahead and smooth this out here. I don't know why. I feel like I'm like I'm I'm I've been concepting this thing for so long. I'm almost terrified of uh, actually working on this. Let's do a quick save here, and we're gonna go to quick save and let's we'll load up that last one here. Yeah, exactly. I agree that learning how to learn is a huge thing. Going through high school, for the the beginning of high school, I wasn't very good at it. I'd kind of coasted up until then and didn't do a whole lot of homework and stuff. Uh, end of high school, I started to really, you know, sit down at night and do the whole, I don't get into index cards or anything, but actually going through and taking notes. Uh, and that's most of my job nowadays is just going through and taking notes. I have t so many notes and then referring back to those notes and going through and just you know, when I learn new programs and stuff, what I, how I was learning in college and high school is still what I do today, um, for what it's worth. If we go over here, let's go to our crease menu, and we'll do crease PG, and then we'll hit D for our subdivide, and that'll kind of keep these nice and sharp along here. We don't have to keep that super creased all the way through. Uh, for example, if we go here to geometry, we have our crease menu here, and we also have our dynamic uh, subdivision here. So we'll open both of these. Now you're going to see our smooth preview is only going up to two, which means we control D once, control D twice. So we subdivided it twice is what it's showing us. If we change that to three, that'll be three uh, dynamic subdivisions. Our crease level is set to 15 by default. Um, if you set this to one, that's basically telling it um, it's doing the equivalent of crease where I want it creased, subdivide once, uncrease everything, and then subdivide again. And what that gives us is we do shift D and then D again. You're going to see how it kind of just softens that transition. Um, might be easier. Let's do it on a different object here real quick. 
sorry, tangent, make polymesh 3D. So now, uh, to, you know, to polygroup this thing, we're just like we did earlier, you can go to polygroups and then uh, group by normals. And then you can do here a crease PG under your crease menu. And now we just basically creased where those polygroups are. We can hit D for a dynamic preview. And that gives us a nice smooth cylinder here. Uh, but then again, if we go down here and we do like, okay, so here's dynamic smooth. So do if we do zero, it's like it's not dynamic previewing anything. If we do one, it's what it would look like if we subdivided once, twice, three times. Um, and then our crease level is set at 15. So we can crease all the way up to 15 and it'll preview those polygons and it'll still stay creased. Uh, we set it to say four and then drop our crease level down to one and then do shift D and then to get rid of it. If shift D just turns that off and then D turns it back on. Now you can see it creases one subdivision and then all the way up to two, three, and four, it's uncreased. If we increase, I think I turned that down to zero. Let's do a crease level of two. And there we go. Now it's tightening up. If we do a crease level of three, it's even tighter, but still a little bevel because it uncreased right before we went to subdivision of four. And if we do a crease uh, level of four, that just keeps it perfectly creased. Now, if we change the smooth subdivision to five and then shift D and D again, now we're getting an even tighter bevel. So you can use that to kind of control what you're getting. And also, it's because we're having so much fun with that. Just in case you're new, um, there's a Q mesh one. So we're going to go to, you know what? Let's pick anything. We'll do a star here. Go into polyframe mode. Let's go down to initialize. Uh, we just make it poly mesh 3D as well. Um, may hit Q cube. And that'll give you a cube. And this is like a Q mesh brush cube here. So now we can go into geometry. If we hit dynamic on this one, it's going to average these vertices and it's going to kind of start softening it. Uh, so you can go through here and do, you know what? Let's change our crease level. Let's go ahead and crease polygroup. So it keeps it nice and creased. We'll change our crease level to like three, smooth subdiv to four, and then we'll do shift D and D again. And now it's giving us that, uh, that look there. Now, if you want to do that in another way, that has a little bit more control. Um, actually, let's make this a little bit more interesting too. I'm going to go to Q mesh, a single poly, alt drag over these faces here, pull these up, pull this out. And uh, yeah, I think that'll work. And then we can hold down, uh, you can also hold down Alt and just drag through. Oops, sorry, um, just pull through. Sorry, don't hold down Alt, just pull through, pull through again. And that'll kind of give us this look. Uh, I'm gonna go through here, go to your crease menu and do uncrease all. So we have no creasing here. Um, if we wanna clean up these poly groups, we can just go into your poly group menu and choose group by normals. And then if you wanted to, you could crease those poly groups. We're gonna leave that alone for now. So uh, if you go in here to dynamic now, you're going to see it just kind of blobs it out. Um, if you, instead of doing smooth, you do Q grid. Now you can do smooth and Q grid at the same time, but I will just start with Q grid now. So if you do Q grid and you crank that up, that's going to put in um, dividing lines here. So if we go ahead and apply that, you're going to see it's just building in lines along every single polygon here. And uh, while it's done, do that. So we're in dynamic, turn it on and off. You can go through here and change the coverage so you can get bigger uh, bevels along the side. You can change it from bevel to chamfer and you can kind of change, uh, again, the coverage and then the amount of lines built in there. Um, you can do bevel and chamfer if you want or just bevel. Uh, you can turn constant on and off and just kind of dial that in here. Now, if I do smooth, it will go ahead and add a smooth uh, modifier here. So you can see, okay, let's change our Q grid up to kind of tighten that up and then our coverage up or down with smooth on. And again, this is just a preview. If I hit shift D, it goes back to nothing. It's just these, and then you can go through here and be like, you know what, I wanna go one more stair. And then I can hit D again, and it's just continues to add uh, that dynamic Q grid preview. Now, of course, if you wanna make that into real geo, just hit apply. And then we can look at this. If we delete lower, you can see exactly what it's doing and where it's adding your edge loops to get you those nice, polished, smooth shapes. Pretty good. Hey, Danny, thanks for showing up. It's early where I am. Probably not where you guys are, though. Um. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
Yeah, and yeah, anything you can to get that, get any sort of while well, you're learning 3D, get it embedded in your head. And for me, it takes a lot of just doing it as well. It's not I, I have to get the the mileage out of the program. If I just do it once, and even if I take notes, I'll remember it for a bit. But then if I have to go back and do it again, I'll be like, oh, let me grab my notes because I'm not going to remember it. But at least I have my notes to refer back to. Um, that's a little bit quicker than going through videos. But then I can also link to videos in the notes so that if I do want to watch the process again, I have access to that. So whatever it takes. Yeah, like a cheat sheet thing. Exactly. A uh, gambler. And um, yeah, th yeah, Thomas. Um, yeah, and also self-taught and problem solving. My entire job revolves around how to solve problems. Um, and because, you know, you'll, you'll set yourself up to do uh, one thing a lot, but then if you have to transition to a different type of game or another game or another type of asset, uh, you're back to square one almost. And not really, because you can bring the experience you've had from before to uh, attack those problems. The problem to solving problems is if you've only attacked problems a certain way, um, I always say, you know, it's the old thing where he's like, okay, I'm really good at using this hammer, but unfortunately, if you only have a hammer, um, every problem is going to look like a nail. And so if you need to, you know, I don't know, put up or, you know, fix a watch and all you've got is a hammer, you're probably not going to fix that watch very well unless the problem is just tapping something on into place. Hopefully it is because if you have to go through there and unscrew something, you're kind of SOL if you're just, you, if you've only got a hammer. So that's why I like ZBrush is because it allows a ton of problem solving techniques uh, all within one program. Um, but also kind of, you know, expanding your horizons and learning new stuff is never a bad thing either. Just to have more tools, different types of tools in your tool belt, even if it's the same kind of tool sometimes. Um, it's useful to have like a ball peen hammer versus a jackhammer versus a, a mallet. You know, you can, they're all hammers, but you can kind of use them for different things. You know, just kind of expanding uh, yourself that way. Let's go ahead and go to sub tool here and delete. Okay, make some headway here. Hit F. There we go. Shift D. Okay, so we've talked about uh, smooth subdividing and all that good stuff there. <laughs> you don't want to be me, trust me. Um, also, if I start sweating profusely, I'm talking faster than normal, even though I'm a super fast talker. I took my wife's pre-workout this morning. I stopped taking mine just because there's no point in having two different pre-workouts, so I'm taking hers, and I think hers is a little stronger than mine. Mine's pretty mellow, but hers is pretty intense. She's a big fan of James Harrison from the Steelers, so she'll watch his Instagram, YouTube videos, and then go and work out with her pre-workout, which is what she's doing right now. And uh, I'm not working out. I'm sitting at the computer, talking really fast and trying not to sweat. Okay, so we've got this here. Okay, let's go ahead and start detailing this thing up. So before I get to where I want to put this stuff, let's go ahead and just start dialing in um, some quick detail uh, we've got the seams kind of built in here, so I'm going to hit Control D. So I'm actually going to add subdivisions now. I'm not going to just preview those subdivisions. I'm actually adding subdivisions. And now at this point, we can start going through here. And wherever you know you have thumbs or things that wrinkle a lot, let's go ahead and go to our standard brush here. Go to Stroke, and if we go up here, let's, we can close all these curved things down here. Uh, we've got Lazy Mouse turned on. Uh, you can crank that Lazy Radius up. Here. So now we have a nice smooth stroke, and then you can tap L uh, to turn that off. Now, by default in the standard brush, that stroke is going to be lazy mouse is going to be set at one. So it just kind of evens your stroke out. Um, an alternative to that, or something that's similar to that, is I usually just go into lazy radius and then tap L to turn that off. And you can just again tap L to turn that on and off. Um, if you go over here to your mouse average, you can crank that up as well. So with lazy mouse off, it'll still kind of average your mouse strokes or your, in this case, your tablet strokes, and uh, allow you to do some of that stuff. Uh, also, if you're sculpting, uh, I don't mind having this follow the faces, see how it kind of rotates around um, the object here. When I'm sculpting, I don't necessarily need to see that, so I'm going to go here to Preferences, Edit, Turn Off Align Cursor to Surface, and that'll allow me to kind of go through here. Now, because I split these things up, um, I'm not going to be able to sculpt wrinkles across these things. Now, that doesn't mean I'm stuck there. I mean, I can go back down here to subdivision level one, merge these things down, subdivide them up as I go through, and then split them later, which, you know what, let's do that. So let's go ahead and delete higher here. I'm going to hold down shift and alt and uh, do the bent arrow up, alt tap this one, shift, bent arrow up, alt tap this one, bent arrow up, and then I'm just going to 
control E is my hotkey to merge, merge those things down and now I can sculpt across them. So I know if I'm going to be subdividing as I go, control D, I can go through here now and I can just sculpt across here. Uh, make sure if at any point you had turned like max by polygroups up to 100 or something, you want that off because as you start sculpting, it's only going to sculpt on that one polygroup here. So just in case, sometimes that happens to me. And then we'll turn on lazy radius here. There we go. And now I can kind of sculpt across a little bit. And we can always, again, like I said, we can always split these things apart as we go. Uh, smooth is fine. Just kind of looking through here. And you can also, we can also um, add geometry on top of this, which we're definitely going to do. Let's go into Damien Standard and uh, also start cutting in across here so we can get some deeper cuts. And down around the bottom here, we'll have some deeper cuts here. And we're also going to put like some cool little uh, nanotechnology things on the fingertip. So you know like when you're jogging and it's cold outside and you want to swipe on your phone and it doesn't recognize your fingers. Well, we're going to fix that with our sci-fi technology here. She's using a uh, futuristic Amazon. And on this one, I didn't crease polygroups, which isn't a huge deal. It's averaging them, but since we had, I think this one had it creased, uh, these ones didn't, which again is fine. And I can always go through here and like, you know, control shift, control shift A, mask, invert that mask. And then, um, we, you know, go through and move these things up or down or inflate or sculpt on these uh, as needed. Like so. And then along the knuckles here, I am going to go in here with my clay brush. We still have back face masking on. So we can go through here and kind of bump out. We're just, I'm just adding a little bit of form back in here because when you go through and subdivide, it'll start, um, again, averaging your vertices and kind of not keeping your forms correctly. Now, if I'm working really low, like when we're doing base mesh stuff, sometimes I'll keep the smooth modifier off when I subdivide, just turn that off. And uh, then I can go through and smooth as I need. Uh, but in this case, it was fine just to have them averaged and then just go through here and just kind of build back up any places I want to here. And again, these knuckles are going to have plastic bits on them. So kind of keeping that in mind here. And then through here, we'll cut in some panels here down on the bottom here. Again, we'll use our Damien standard brush. And if you need that, it's B, D, and then S to get your uh, Damien standard, Dam standard. Um. <laughs> That's true. And, and you would be surprised how creative people can get with their hammers. I'm not even saying it's a bad thing to be super good and having a gold-plated uh, Thor hammer to solve all your problems because, man, you can go a long way with uh, a godlike hammer. But, you know, like I said, that you're kind of limiting yourself to uh, what, what, e even though Thor can do an awful lot of things with that hammer, uh, you know, it's not, it's not an all purpose tool, unfortunately. Here, here, here. Let's see. Dig these things in and then smooth out those other areas. And as, as we continue to subdivide, we'll, we can continue to, uh, add wrinkles as needed. We'll kind of put some down here at the bottom of the thumb as well. Now, if you put in a whole bunch of wrinkles, you're going to give the illusion, and that's all, what 3D is all about, is giving the illusion of something, but this is giving you the illusion of a material property that's very thin and kind of bunches a lot. So if you want to do like thick leather gloves, keep your wrinkles very simple. And uh, sometimes what will come up is uh, the Marvelous Designer stuff, and I did... Uh, let me. Uh, I did a marvelous designer to ZBrush workflow because ZBrush is really good with their Zero Mesher at <clears throat> making marvelous designer meshes a little bit more useful out of the box. Just kind of bringing it in <clears throat> and using ZBrush to detail up your cloth and stuff like that. Because I'm terrible at sculpting cloth. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's like when I sculpt cloth, it's basically a bunch of. Um, Reference is what I have to use just to kind of even get anything resembling cloth is just a ton of reference. I mean, there's some s techniques and standards that you can do to like, you know, make sure your cloth, yeah, when you're doing wrinkles, it's not like a bunch of big loopy stuff. It's more straight and then curved and then straight and then curved. So you can 
kind of dial in your wrinkles like that. And again, for me, it's, you know, if you have to make it look like it's hanging convincingly, going through and just grabbing a lot of reference. If I need to sculpt some jeans, then I'll take, I'll put on a pair of jeans and I'll just take pictures of it all the way around and just sculpt using that reference. Um, there are people out there who can sculpt amazing cloth from their brains. I'm not one of them. So again, I use whatever I can at my convenience uh, to kind of make me look better than I am. It's all about the illusion. And, uh, but yeah, it's another tool. And then using ZBrush to do all the detail work. I, I usually just do my primary forms and Marvelous, and then I'll bring it in here and just kind of uh, crank it up a notch. ZBrush is super good at that. Okay, so we got this kind of detailed out here. Let's make sure, kind of keep looking at this reference here, and I'm kind of deciding how I want this to go down. Um, cool, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, so for ZBrush, uh, yeah, Lazy Nozomi. Uh, is good. I use that in Photoshop as well. Um, and honestly, yeah, so as far as like, we've gone over this before too, but if you want that functionality in ZBrush, um, so Z plugin, I moved my button, but yours will be under quick sketch here. You can do quick sketch. I'll just do a quick, um, if you go back through the workshop videos, we did a bunch of this. It's so much fun. I love it. Um, so we can go through here. We can grab our standard brush here with RGB turned on, and we can hit X symmetry here, go into geometry, turn off smooth, ah, let's make it a poly mesh 3D. Geometry, turn off smooth modifier, just so we don't get the rounded corners here, divide that up however many times you want for the resolution to poly paint on, hit X, and then we can go through here and start uh, drawing here. Now, because ZBrush does have lazy mouse built in, you're good to go, so we can crank that lazy radius up. You can do, uh, and also just being able to draw in symmetry. I have another tool in Photoshop where I can like draw half and then put the ruler line down and then hit a button to kind of constantly keep mirroring. But this is so much nicer. And also the ability to go in here to transform, do X and Y symmetry, or go in here to radial symmetry and do radial symmetry. And of course you can crank that way up. Spiral graph, anybody play with those when you're a kid? You just go around and around and around and around and around. And then your pen runs out of ink. And then you show it to your parents and they'll be like, you're so talented moving that pin in a circle for hours. Um, and then you can also go through here and change your different colors. Uh, let's do our radial count down. And because it's ZBrush, you can also, you know, you're drawing, but you can also go through here and you can use W to kind of pull up and use that to your advantage in your drawings if you want to. Um, a lot of really cool stuff. In fact, when we were doing our armor that we showed earlier, let me load up an old version of that. Let's see, female armor. Let's go 01. So I drag this out. This is an older version of it as we were kind of working through. If I go down to the very bottom here, uh, do I not have it? There was a, um, I must have deleted out. Let's go to delete all. Hmm. Tech suit, armor, neck suit, tech suit. Boy. And this might have been. Yeah, I must have deleted out. This is a very early version. You can see when we very first started. You know, kind of concepting her out. We did that. We did the base female first. So if you go way back, we went through and we did the anatomy and kind of sculpted her out and remeshed her and all that good stuff. So, been through a lot of fun stuff here. Now we're all the way up to gloves. So I'm going to hit Control D one more time on this thing, and we'll go ahead and just continue sculpting through uh, where the compression wrinkles are going to go. Um, and when you're talking about wrinkles, there's uh, compression wrinkles. There's memory wrinkles, which is kind of like if you took a shirt and then wadded it up and threw it on your floor and then picked it up the next morning and trying to flatten it out, you would see a lot of, I think they're called memory wrinkles. Um, those I would end up using a, an alpha for because they're pretty fine and they don't really change the surface very much, but they do definitely have an effect on the final look. So probably having a, a, an alpha that you can drag out of kind of memory wrinkles, very fine wrinkles to give you that lived in look. This is an option here. Go 
through here. And we get to the boots, too. It'll be a fun one. She kind of has tech suit slippers underneath her boots. And the reason, if, if you uh, missed the last couple workshops, we talked about, um, you know, why I'm sculpting, doing all this kind of build-up sculpting. And it just allows me uh, to have more opportunities. Let's turn Ziad on for a standard brush here. Um, it allows me to... Um, and turn on our lazy radius here. We'll crank that down just a bit. Um, more opportunities for uh, portfolio stuff. So we can do, I can do like just her for like an anatomy portfolio thing. And then I can do her, just her tech suit and pose that out and kind of get a cool tech suit shot. And then I can put on her armor and she'll be armored up and I can put on her helmet and I can do various degrees of like her helmet being animated or not. And then I can do her uh, body tech suit over that or just the tech suit sitting in a cryo chamber or like in a factory or a warehouse somewhere. Just a lot of different opportunities. And if I don't build all that out, um, and for production, that's fine. If you're never going to see it, don't, you know, pick and choose your battles. If you don't want to have to work late by making something that nobody's ever going to see. Um, but for personal projects and stuff, I tend to overbuild just so I can have the ability to kind of go back in and kind of do that here. Uh, there's also different smoothing alg algorithms. So as you go through here and start smoothing and you hold down shift and then let go of shift, that'll kind of smooth across the surface. Uh, and uh, I think Paul uh, Gabriel explained it as if you're smoothing, if you hold down shift and smooth, that smooths in all three axes, like uh, X, Y, and Z. If you s hold down shift, start smoothing and let go of shift, it'll just smooth in the two axes. So it'll kind of average the vertices over the form, so it's not quite as destructive. Just in case that's useful. Okay. Good enough, good enough. Uh, we got the hands here. We're gonna put some, we're gonna put a plate on here. Now, if I wanted to use my topology brush to put kind of like a rubberized pad under here, like a like a sci-fi uh, roll of dime, so if she hits somebody, it really hurts. Um, it's gonna yell at me, so if I do BTO for my topology brush, it's gonna say, hey, there's subdivision levels here. You can go here and do uh, delete lower do whatever you need to do and then reconstruct. You can see this little reconstruct is grayed out um, and get your subdivision levels back. Uh, what I usually tend to do though is I'll, um, I'll just put in a null object if I go. I mean, if you have another object that doesn't have subdivision have levels, um, that's fine too. So if we turn on like this one here, that doesn't have subdivision levels. So we can select that one, have this one visible, BTO, and now I can go through here and it won't yell at us here. So we can go like, okay, I want a pad here, across. There we go. And then we can just tap away from those curves and then get that. We can do a, sp now again, this is attached to, if we go into solo mode, it's associated with this object, which is masked by default. So we can do a uh, split mask points here. And now it's in its own thing. We can shoot that to the top and then we can just look at these two here. F to frame. Go out of solo mode. So that's one way. Uh, you could also do just like insert a sphere or a star or whatever, scale it down, and then you'll always have a null, no subdivision object kind of sitting at the middle of your scene or at the floor. Excuse me. And um, that's another option there. So we can go through here if we want to. Let's go ahead and round out those sides here. I'm going to go to insert single edge loop here. I'm going to mask this one here. Now you're going to be careful... Um, when you do topology brush or insert mesh brush, if you insert it on something that has DynaMesh turned on, uh, it will inherit all of those properties, which is a feature, and it's a really cool feature. Um, but sometimes when you're using topology brush to make something you don't want to have DynaMesh, make sure you turn that off. Here, you can just kind of move that vert out, or you can just go through here. You can also use the Z Modeler brush, uh, BZM. I have a hotkey for it. If you want to sign a hotkey in a brush, just click on it, hold down Control alt and tap, and it'll say... At the top, press any key combination. We'll do like Alt P, I guess. And now we have, if I do Alt P, it'll be the clothing hardware brush. Um, but I have Alt Q assigned to Z modeler. And you can hover over a vertex 
uh, with Zmodeler brush, and you can choose uh, move. Where is it at? There you go. We can move by brush radius or infinite depth. Uh, super useful if you're doing hard surface stuff. But in this case, I'm just kind of moving stuff around. Everybody good? Uh, oh, looks like I missed a bunch here. Um, <laughs> that's true. Um, yes, and thick leather. Whenever, so whenever this even like denim. Um, if you go around to the side, they have puckering, and there's actually puckering off. You can make your own. In fact, we did make our own. Um, let's do it again. So what we can do here is go to Plane 3D, drag this out. For instance, we've been talking about like doing the detailing of ZBrush. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's crank this down here. Um, if I want to, I can go to Geometry, Z Remesher. We'll do same, adapt the size down to zero, and that'll just remesh this into uh, squares here. Um, and now what I can do is I want to give it thickness. I guess it doesn't really matter. If I wanted to, I can go through here and like hover over face. We'll do Q mesh, poly group ball. Actually, we'll just do half. Let's make it a little simpler. There we go. We can pull that down and then we can flip our vertices here. And then again, we're going to turn off that smooth modifier, divide that up a bit. And then we'll do our standard brush with our lazy mouse turned on. And we can go through here and we can kind of do a jeans pucker on the side or, you know, whatever kind of puckering you'd want to do. Kind of a thick puckering. Hold down Shift. Let's go to Smooth Stronger. And, you know, again, we talked about this before, but if you can hold down Shift and go down here to the brush properties, the Smooth Brush modifiers, you have the weighted smooth mode. So we have one turned on for Smooth Stronger, which is basically just smoothing things stronger, but there's a lot of different smooth options in there. Um, so if you make our puckering alpha, in order to make that, um, you know, you can make your document size and do all the stuff like we did for the knurling, but I'm going to make this a little bit easier. Go out of edit mode, go into my standard brush here, and we're going to go to our MRGBZ grabber, grab this out, and we'll just grab as much of this as we can. And what this is going to do is grab the texture, uh, which we don't need, so we can just turn that off. Uh, but we grab that alpha here, so now what we can do is hit Control N. And we'll go back to our ZBrush hands here, hit F, tap here. Let's go ahead and subdivide one more time. And now let's take our, well, we can we can steal some options here. So I'm going to hit the comma key here. We're going to go to brush and we're going to go to our weave, no, our stitch brush here. And they've got some stitches in here. So we wanted to put like some leader hose and stitches along here. We can, uh, but we can also switch that alpha out with our new um, pucker brush. And then we can just kind of dial in uh, puckering along the side if we'd like. Um, and where that's all coming in is under the stroke menu. It's it's easy to reset up, but um, I also like to just use other brushes for that. If you go over here to the modifiers, there's a roll turned on. Um, if you turn that off, you're going to see you would have to go in here and change your uh, lazy step up to like one. And then I'll just kind of da, 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 start stepping this thing down. You probably need to change that even to a higher value here. Um, but if you turn lazy step down, I think it was a 0.25 or 0.1, and turn roll on, that'll just roll that alpha through. And now you can just kind of just dial in. You can even just go across the seam here. Just dial in that puckering along the side, like so. Oh, um. Uh, let's see. Oh, the mirror tool is, uh, yo boy, I'd have to, I'm not really sure. I'd have to go look. It's, it's just like mirror. If you do mirror tool Photoshop, it'll show up. Actually, if you download, uh, the lazy Nizumi trial and go to the help docs, that's where I found it was, um, was in there. Now, let's see, standard brush here. And on my channel, we did a little bit of uh, Photoshop concepting where we did um, texture import. Let's see, characters. We did these robot characters, and we also did a couple weapon concepts here. So if we go to. With alpha, let's see. We did a bunch of different. Um, 
you know, these kind of gun concepts. Let's go view extra large icons, um, you know, in Photoshop and stuff. And you could do it in ZBrush as well. We did our, like I said, our mech suit concept in ZBrush and all that good stuff. And that was using like Brush Erator uh, as a really nice tool. Let's see, lazy mouse is on, Z intensities. Let's crank that up just a bit. And actually, let's go to geometry. We'll delete higher. Okay, and then we've got this pad down here we were working on. Alt tap that one, and we just kind of push this into place here. We can make it bigger, or smaller. How we do? Okay, we're good. Now on this one, if I hit D, that's going to give us our dynamic preview. It is creasing along here. Um, I might, you know, I I can go in and play with the creasing levels and amounts if I want to, or if I know I'm just going to be um, resurfacing this one. Uh, or I can just hit Control D and then go up here to uncrease all and just do it manually if I'm going to be pretty much leaving this alone and then Control D again and now I've got the bevels that I want here like so and then I'll Alt tap this one and I can just pass my lazy lazy brush around this and kind of make it look like it's kind of embedded in there now I could go in and build this out um, and I can always go in and rebuild this. I can go back down to the lowest and kind of Q mesh these these things in or isolate that top part here, but it might be a little bit overkill, so I'm going to leave that alone. If I want to sculpt through this object, I can turn on transparency and ghost, and now it'll allow me just to kind of disregard the uh, object underneath, which is sometimes useful for this kind of stuff. So we'll go through here and smooth this a bit. And if that smooth stronger is too intense, just hold down shift and bring, bring your Z intensity back down. And now we can kind of Go through here. Kind of pop these things out here. There we go. Um, so she got this little pad on her hand here, which we can do all sorts of cool stuff with. I'm seeing it on some of this reference here. Uh, you can also, actually, speaking of reference, Let's see what I was doing originally. So if I go down here to our original sculpt, go into solo mode, we can do, actually, let's again hit X to get out of X symmetry, hold down Alt and Control Shift and then delete hidden. We just do one side and mirror it if we want. And now we can do Shift S, Shift S, and then Shift S and Shift S. And keep me grounded here. And for the bottom here, yeah, we've got that kind of pad built in. And we can put buttons on this pad if we want to. If we want to get even fancier, um, and I don't feel like going in here with Z Modeler, for instance, and like, you know, doing split stuff. Well, you know what? We can, though. Let's go ahead and uh, select this thing here. Let's take our undo history and we'll go back to our original where we just subdivided once, delete lower, and now we can go through here if we wanted to, we can do a split uh, point, and you can just split in some points here if you wanted to put in some little cool stuff. If you want to punch all the way through, make sure you go around to the, the back side here and just kind of split. Because we did a split point with a value, we can just split through here, then you can do a Q mesh polygroup all, and go zoop, there we go. And now that'll kind of punt those things out. Now. Before you do that, if you wanted to, you can also do, um, let's isolate these ones here. So you can see if we turn on double, you're going to see both sides here. If we do an auto groups, we don't want to do an auto groups, but we do want to polygroup one side of these. So I'm going to go to the side, hold alt, and then hit control W. And now since these are all one, we can do Q mesh polygroup all. We can pull out, hit control, and that'll pop out a new um, subtool here. And then we can go through here and Q mesh polygroup all, all those ones in. And now when we hit D, that'll go through here. And now we have uh, these things we can push back through. So if we go through and we grab this bottom polygroup here, we can Q mesh and then hold down shift to pull along that surface normal. We can kind of push those in a little bit. Same thing here. Um, oops, that's polygroup all. Let's do polygroup, if we do polygroup island, and these aren't on a flat plane. So again, you know what, let's just grab these ones here, control W. 
And now we can hold down Q mesh and then hold down shift and just punch those through. It can, they can kind of sit in or kind of sit up over it a little bit. And if you want to make those a separate object, control shift, tap, control shift A, go to your subtool menu, split hidden, shift D temporarily. Then we can just do a bevel edge loop complete. And error. let's see, bevel. Yeah, it's going to want to, since these are so simple, uh, we can actually, let's just bevel the creases here. So I'm going to go over here to geometry. Uh, I mean, we can inset. And, uh, okay, let's do that. Let's do, you can you can go in here to your crease and just turn on bevel wherever the creases are and do a bevel width. Uh, but in lieu of that, let's do an inset polygroup all. And we'll do region. There we go. Like so, and now we can just do Q mesh polygroup all, hold down shift and just kind of pull those up. So now we're working on a very small scale, so Z modeler might start doing a little bit of uh, weird stuff here. Um, but now we can just do a crease PG, go out of solo mode, hit D on these ones, and now they fit perfectly in there. If you did want to shrink these things down just a bit, uh, let's go to transparency ghost here. We're going to do Q mesh polygroup all, and again, hold down shift, and that'll just kind of push along that surface normal for all of them. You can kind of push those in just a bit and turn off transparency here. And even on this one here, if we do shift D, um, let's see if this one will do a better job. Let's go to bevel edge loop complete. There we go. So we can bevel that one here, here, here. We'll do a crease PG. Go to solo mode. There we go. So now we've got those things kind of embedded right in there. And now we can go with our move brush here. We can kind of Make that follow a little bit better. If you wanted the Z modeler that out. Um, if we do Shift D, that looks like a little, little bit of a harsh line around here. So what I'm going to do is do a bevel edge loop complete. And let's do Shift D solo mode here. Yeah, those triangles are really uh, uh, not doing it for me. All right, we'll do another. Uh, let's see, we could also do, alternatively, we could do a Q mesh polygroup all and just pull this out and then grab this one and hold down shift and pull that up a little bit to get a bevel around the side. And then, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, uh, so if you wanted to round this one out, you can also do insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation turned on. And then when you kind of insert an edge loop and you pull out, it'll you can either pull in to get kind of an inverted uh, bevel in there or pull out to get an, uh, a rounded bevel in there if you want to. But I'm just trying to, if I hit D here, just softening that outer transition just a bit for her hand there. Cool, cool, everybody good? Let's see. Um, da, da, da. And there's another plugin if you wanted to do paint what is it? Uh, uh, it's a paint shop. It's been a long time since I've used it, but it's also really cool. And it's built into ZBrush, I think. I don't think, I mean, you can go and download it separately. Um, boy, where is that at? Texture? No. I thought it was the plugin. There's a uh, paint shop plugin that you can just go through and use ZBrush to kind of paint with. Uh, you can check that out. Um, <laughs> um, speaking of, so Dark and Grim says he's glad he's not the only one that overbuilds, so he's building a motorcycle uh, with all the gears and stuff. And the cool thing about doing that, too, is you can always have a library of stuff to pull from, hard to hard surface stuff, so that since you've made it, even if you don't see it in necessarily one project, um, you can use that as an insert mesh brush library later and uh, do it all. Oh, thank you, 3D Printed Aspie, for all my links here. Cool, cool. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and if you missed uh, anything previous to this, just go to the Pixelogic uh, YouTube channel and you'll see all the past episodes of this Twitch stream and then everything forward. <clears throat> it does. Let's see. Let's see if it'll work. I haven't actually used it with uh, ZBrush. Well, let's give it a shot here. So if we have this here and we go to our plane 3D 
And you know what? Let's sculpt with it. This might be interesting. Let's do Control D. Wait, make poly mesh 3D. And okay, oh yeah, let's turn on smooth. Let's divide that up. Um, so now if I'm sculpting here, and we go turn this on. Um, by default, it's just a pulled string, which is just like a uh, lazy mouse. Uh, but if we do something more like, oh, it's been a while since I've been in here. Let's do gears. So if you just tap, I think, is it going to do it? Again, it's been a while since I've used this thing. Steps. Hmm. I'll have to play with this. I, in Photoshop, I use it a lot, but in here, uh, I really don't. Actually, let's make sure I have Lazy Mouse turned off. Maybe that's it. Gears, let's add that up. Pressure, processing, rulers. Hmm. I'm not sure about using it in Zebra. Uh, I'll have to check that out. Uh, but it's very useful, especially for Photoshop that doesn't have a lot of stuff built in uh, that ZBrush does by default. Like I said, you know, ZBrush has all that. The stuff I usually use in there is built into ZBrush, so it's not a huge deal. Um, cool, cool. Um, most of the gloves were done today, but again, if you go back to the videos, you'll see. Um, well, I mean, we concepted the, gun, the gloves out a while ago. And we're not even done yet. I haven't even really started these gloves. These are just kind of basically blocked out. Let me do, uh, just kind of looking through here, seeing what kind of details I want to add. Um, yeah, exactly. Electrocharge, whatever these things are. Maybe it's a, a power, Nintendo Power Glove. You can really crush it in a uh, paper boy. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah, the pic capture window. So I probably need to change it. I think by default it's linked up to Photoshop, which is why it always works in Photoshop and Pix and ZBrush it isn't. So I'll have to go through that setting there. Paint stop. Yes. Draw menu. Thank you. So if we go here to draw. Uh, is it in here? Where's paint stop? I I always find it every once in a while, and I never end up uh, using it. Uh, but I mean, I used to use it a while back, but not recently. Yeah, that's right. Hook the window. Let's try that. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's see. Let's try that one more time. Here. Um, add this here and hook. After clicking OK, so we place your cursor inside the window you wish to hook and wait three seconds. If the window is successfully hooked, two, three. Yay. Okay, there it is. Okay, so if we go back here, let's turn this off temporarily. We'll go back to our polyplane here. So with that off, we can go through here. Oh, it's on. Okay, so now in this case, we have pulled string. Uh, if we go over here to gears, let's see if we can just tap. Okay, we have concentric circle with gears turned on, so as we kind of sculpt around, it'll kind of go into a gear shape here. Um, you can also do, I mean, mostly I would I would use this thing for the um, symmetry and stuff, the steps. So as I move around, there's all sorts of cool stuff in here you can do. Let's see, so mode is pulled string, connected line, ellipse, isometric. Let's do an ellipse here. If we hold down, was it Alt? Again, I wasn't really uh, Alt. No, Control. There it is. Um, you can change this size. You can change this thing in and out. You can kind of make the ellipse, and then you can kind of rotate this thing around. So you can kind of sculpt an ellipse like so. I'm using my mouse here. So you can go like thin to thick to thin like so. And if you want to, you can move this thing down like this, and then you can go, did I just reset it? Damn it. Yeah, you can see I don't use this very much here. Let's see, so control, and then this is the rotate, this is the size, and this is the ellipse amount. Let's do size up, and then if I wanna move this, there we go. So we can do thin to thick to thin, 
just with our brush sensitivity here. And then if I move this down, I can go thin to thick to thin, like so. And again, I'm sculpting, but you can draw with this and stuff too. And all sorts of really cool stuff in here. There's a fisheye perspective in here, lots of really cool stuff. So check it out if it's cool. Um, like I said, I don't use it in ZBrush all that much. I remember this one. Let me see. Mode moving average. Miss. Yeah, you can do gear shapes. And even on here, you can have it match up or not. Um, if you're using your mouse, probably might be a little bit more on point there. Yeah, all sorts of cool stuff. Does that work? <laughs> cool, cool. Um, for carbon fiber, I'd probably end up using a, um, an alpha that had carbon fiber on it. You could do a weave too. In fact, that, um, Joseph Drust's nano tile that we talked about, he does a weave where he goes and switches those things out and then captures that as a weave and then tiles that through. Um, you could also do it and kind of roll the carbon fiber on there if you were, uh, so inclined. Um, or you can do it in the texture later, which is probably what I ended up doing. If it doesn't can deform the surface, I usually just leave that later for the texturing part. Um, but if you wanted to do like some super high detailed, um, you know, tiling fabric -y stuff in ZBrush, you can definitely uh, just dial that in. Let's go ahead and round these fingers out just a little bit. They look a little bit pointy for gloves here. There we go. <laughs> cool, have a good day, Danny Mac. And uh Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it, all the all that stuff and even even beyond that, the fisheye perspective is really cool. You can do like, you know, you can do pr obviously perspective lines. Um Let's keep doing that. It's fun. So we'll go back here, turn that on. I think it's still captured for this window here. Drag this out here. So, for example, if we do perspective, constrain, uh, fisheye perspective, or just perspective. Um, so, for with perspective, you can hold down, you can go through here and kind of change your horizon line or you know the the dots in here. So you can go through here and just start sculpting out. Let's see, change my brush size here. You can go in here to perspective and then look and strain it to those lines. Um, you can also do fisheye perspective, which is even cooler. And that'll make it so that, you know, as you draw out your line here, and then as you, you can kind of go down, it'll kind of do the fisheye thing. And then you can go back and then you want to stop where that blue line meets up. And then you can just connect these things back up here. Let me see. Here and then here, and then you can make a box if you want it to kind of come out this way, and then down, and then you're gonna wanna stop where the red line hits and then sweep this over, and then push this back, and then stop here, and then connect this up, and then connect this up here. Oops, overshot that one here. So we come back this way. And I'm probably the last person in the world that should be demoing this just because <laughs> obviously I don't use this very much, so, but you, you know, you get it. Perspective, fisheye perspective, all that good stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. So let's go ahead and go back to our glove here. Oops. There we go. Uh, so we got our bottom thing here. Now, if I wanted to, I guess, uh, you know what, I'll leave those alone for now. That's fine. So we can kind of just start. Let's go back here to knuckles. What kind of knuckle things we want to do? Let's go back to my concept mesh here. And if we want to keep kind of playing with this, we can go into solo mode with these, and we can go, you know what? Um, let's go ahead and change our resolution up, turn off project, turn off blur, and we'll just dynamesh this a bit here. So we can kind of go through. And it's like, okay, so we've got these knuckle things on here. They're going to be vaguely uh, this shape. They're going to be embedded a little bit. We can kind of start figuring out. Let's turn lazy mouse off with L. And we'll use our H polish brush. 
So we can kind of just, you know, smooth and H polish and move. And we can use pinch. So we can kind of pinch back through here. And it's like, okay, that's the kind of thing we want. And then we can also kind of put a little screw port in here if we want with a clay brush here. Be like, okay, that's, we're just kind of refining a little bit. We can go in here with the Damien Standard and be like, okay, is this the shape we really want? Yeah, maybe something like that. And so now that we have that, we can just go through and model this thing pretty quickly. Um, if you want to refine it further, what I might be inclined to do here is go ahead and mask this one out. I mean, you can duplicate this off too as well. But let's go ahead and mask this out. Hold down Control alt Control alt tap to sharpen that mask up. Let's go ahead and grab that lip there. We'll do Control w which is going to group mask, clear mask, and then we can just isolate this one. Delete hidden, close holes. Uh, delete hidden, close holes is under geometry, modify topology. And then uh, isolate this polygroup here, or you can hit W, control tap that polygroup, control shift. That'll add a little bit of breathing room around there. You can re-dynamesh. And now you've got a separate object here. Let's go ahead and turn off our new glove. Turn this one on. Where are we at? There we go. Uh, no. Let's see. Oh, did we delete hidden instead of split hidden? We should have done a split hidden. So let's roll that back just a little bit. So we've got this here. Let's do a split hidden. There we go. So now we've got both of them here. If we go into solo mode, uh, if you dynamesh, it'll also close the hole um, as well. Or you can just, again, W, Control, Tap. If, if you just hold down Shift, it'll pull it straight up. If you hold down Control, Shift, it'll continue adding edge loops in there. It's a little modeler, uh, transpose modeling trick there. You can H polish this down. Now we've got this separate group here. We can alt tap this original concept. We can control drag. That'll close that Dynamesh hole. You can go through here and smooth that out. And now we're kind of just refining this concept here on top of this. And you can duplicate this down if you'd like. But we're just trying to just figure out exactly what we want this shape to be. And it's a pretty simple shape. So we probably didn't even need to do this. But that's pretty cool. We can pull this out. We'll give it a little lip here. I kind of like that. And if we want to, we uh, just put a video out uh, from my Intro to ZBrush Part 3 on my YouTube channel. Because I keep getting asked this. Um, I think I learned this from Paul Gabriel too. So if you go over here to the brush menu here, and we go to the curve, there's an Accu curve. So with Move, if I want to pull these out the points, I have to go a really small move brush, but it's only going to grab a few things here. And if I go too big, it's just going to pull out to a rounded curve. So if you turn on Accu curve, this will pull out to a corner, like so. So it's really useful for like pulling out to um, like a rectangle as opposed to pulling out and just using your move brush there. Um, for whatever's that worth, whatever's that that's worth, and then you can pull this out if you want to, kind of round the shape off maybe, or not. We can actually round the shape in. All right. So if we wanted to, actually, I like it rounded out a little bit more. Okay. So if we have this, let's go ahead and dynamesh that at a slightly higher resolution here. We'll go in with our Damien Standard brush. We'll cut across here. We can use our H Polish brush here. I'm going to hold down Alt. I'm just going to really, really make that um, obvious where that lip is and then go back in here with my clay brush and kind of dig this in just to make sure it's still what I want. And we can kind of pull this out and around. It's a moth in here. There we go. So now if I want to remake this thing, uh, we can use Z Remesh. We can use uh, Z Sphere Topology. We can just use Primitives and Slice. Let's go ahead and do that. I think that'll be the easiest thing. So what I'm going to do is go to uh, Brush Insert. You can go Brush Insert uh, yeah, 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 Sphere, and you can just start with the sphere and kind of model this around. Um, I also have a custom brush here, so I go if I want to do like a 16 sphere, I can just grab that one. And then I can do a split mass points here, and we'll just get this general shape for this thing. So we'll rotate this thing around, and then we'll use W. Just tap to find that surface normal. And again, we'll just rotate this thing into place, like so. And we'll use the move brush here. To kind of dial this in. And we'll let Z Remesher do the heavy lifting for us, as opposed to going in there and using topology brush or um, 
anything like that. So we're just going to pull this out here. This is vaguely the shape that I want. And really, it's all about getting just an envelope of these shapes here. So there's basically the shape I'm looking for here. Let's go into transparency mode. And let's fatten this up just a little bit here. Rotate. So again, just using move scale and rotate, I'm just having W, E, and R to go through those different modes here. And actually, let's scale this up a bit and then move this down. Perfect. So now what I can do is I can go to the side here, hold down Control Shift, and we're going to slice. Actually, if we do a slice through here, you're going to see, okay, we've got the two polygroups. Then I need to isolate this polygroup, delete hidden, close holes. Um, to do all that at once, what I can do instead of slicing is do a trim. Hold down Control Shift, and we'll do a trim curve, and that will slice as well as trim and close holes. So, there you go. And if you wanted to as well, if it's like, well, it's kind of going into our glove, we don't want that, you can use this to kind of trim. Whoops, we probably want to put the gradient the other way, huh? Tap Alt once to get that smooth curve, and that'll go ahead and dial that in. But really, it's fine with me, and hopefully now what we can do if we want nicer geometry than that, go to zero mesher, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. Let's change our adaptive size down to zero as well and see. Uh, actually, let's do same. There we go. A little bit nicer geometry. And if you wanted to close this so that it's just um, like a polarized cap, uh, isolate that, delete hidden, and then go in your Z modeler brush and do a close convex hole. And that'll go ahead and allow you to kind of do that. And that way you can kind of go through here and punch in a hole a little bit easier um, like this. Um, for the other thing, maybe we can use slice for that. Let's go back here. And uh, actually, that'll work just fine. I'm going to hold down Alt and grab these ones here. And then we can just pull, oops, we'll Q mesh those polygroup here. And if you're ever. You know, if we, we turn on ghost so we can actually go through this thing. Um, if you're ever trying to do a bunch of face operations and edges and points are getting in your way, just hover over an edge and choose do nothing. Hover over a point, choose do nothing, and then it will only be face uh, properties here. So we got this. Let's go ahead and isolate that mask it, invert that mask, and we'll just pull this down like so. That'll give us that lip we were looking for here. And we can also go in here and use our move Accu, which we turned on that Accu for our move brush here. And we can just pull these down to a corner here. And again, since most of this is going to be inside the glove, I really don't care that much if it looks great underneath. I'm just trying to get that little lip that we had. And with simplified geometry here, we can kind of go through with our move brush and kind of pull that out. Now, the uh, trickier part might be putting in that uh, split in shape. So in order to do that, what I might be inclined to do is go through here and do a crease polygroup, and then hit Control D to start dividing this up. Make sure that's kind of out here. I can, I can clean this up uh, as I go as well with my H polish brush. But if that's basically what I'm looking for here, I can go through. And now I can just dynamesh this thing as it is, control drag, and now I can just punch in this hole. Or I can do an insert cylinder if I want. Or another cool one, if we go in here to brush, trim, QRS trim, trim hole. If you do trim hole, it's a camera base. If you're like kind of at the side here and you just trim back, it'll just trim a hole straight back. Or you can hold down Alt, it'll trim a hole straight at you. Um, but you can also just kind of aim it, and you can drag that in, or push this back like this. Um, or you can do, if we just take our standard brush and we clone that off, and we change that to drag dot and give it an alpha, you can hold down Alt and just kind of drag in that. Let's change our focal shift, crank up our Z intensity, and now you can just kind of stamp in that kind of hole. Um, Hey, Thunder Bunny, thanks for showing up. Uh, okay, so question. When I do a closed hole, it doesn't give me a star with my topology. Is there a switch? i got a toggle with Z model. Yes, there is a two options on that closed hole operation. 
there's going to be, let's see, let's grab a sphere here, make poly mesh, go to the side, and we'll do control shift, get rid of that, and then we'll do delete hidden. And now if we do hover over an edge and do close uh, concave hole, that's going to give you that result. You're going to want to do close convex hole, and that'll give you that result, the polarized edge. Now, there is a caveat to this. If we grab, um, okay, let's do this. I'm going to go to my custom menu here, and we've got a cylinder that's 12. So I grab that one here. We can go to geometry, modify topology, and we'll do mesh from brush, and that's going to take my 12 cylinder here. So what we can do is just go in here to our polygroup menu we talked about before, group by normals. We can isolate that top one, delete it, and now we can do close convex hole, and you're going to see that we have interactive curvature on and interactive resolution on, so we can actually pull up and pull down, and we can kind of start dialing in like a lens or a, a dome, that type of thing. Um, now I think, and we'll give this a test, let's go ahead and do crease polygroup, and we'll divide this up like twice, I guess. We'll go over here to delete lower, and we'll isolate just these, just this middle bit here. We'll go ahead and do a delete hidden, and just for fun, let's go to edge loop and see delete loops works. Yeah. And now if we do a Z modeler hover over an edge close convex hole with interactive turned on, um, it'll do resolution, but it won't do that optimal curvature. I think it has to be less than 32, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so one of those uh, limitation type things, but you can, um, I guess you can actually, if you punch this in and then you mask this out and then pull that up and then let's see if this will work. We'll go to insert multiple edge loops with interactive resolution. Yeah, so you can use multiple edge loops with interactive resolution to kind of get the dome effect that you want. Um, so you can kind of do that. Makes sense. And actually, that probably would have been even better for the knuckle detail. Hmm. <laughs> uh, that, that's the thing, too, is and also working, like we were talking earlier, talk, you know, working with students and working with if it's just people at work. Um, I always tell people, not that I know, I certainly don't know everything. I know, like, maybe 25% of ZBrush-ish, and that's only if I use it a lot. I always tell people, don't be afraid. That's kind of what I do at work, too, is you know, people can come and ask me questions on stuff that I've worked on. And if you have any ZBrush questions at work, come bug me, because there's no point in, like, banging your head against a wall for three hours. And if I happen to know the solution or somebody in the office knows the solution, um, you know, feel free to ask. Now, if you ask the question and then, like, 30 minutes later ask and then, like, a day later ask and then, like, three days later ask, probably write it down so you're not constantly asking the same question. But, yeah, if you have that question asked, by all means, please. I ask questions all the time, especially on stuff I'm not you know, good at it. If I, if I can't find it on Google real quick, I'll go ask, I'll go ask the expert. And let's see here, here, solo mode here. Um, so we've got this thing here. Let's go ahead and clean this thing up a little bit here so we can go through here with our smooth brush and our H polish here. And is this maxed out? Yeah, I guess it is. And again, we, you know, since we're still we're in, we're in the refine concept phase, so to kind of illustrate that, let me go to my desktop here, kind of show you where where my head's at with this stuff as we're kind of going through the process. Um, for example, so here's the here's the helmet, this helmet that we that I did a long time ago. Uh, where it basically starts is here, and then as you kind of go through and refine, split up and refine, we're in this stage right here where we're kind of splitting things up, still refining, still in the concept -y phase, and then when we get up here, it'll be super detailed, rebuilt, all that good stuff. Um, another example of that is in here with this one here. So here's the quick concept sketch, which we just finished with, and then over here is where we start breaking pieces off and refining them and making sure everything works together how we want. And then over here is where we start rebuilding and creasing edges, and we can still dynamesh stuff and clip and all stamp detail and stuff as we go. And then here's the final where we put in all the little greebles and slice things up and make panels and all that good stuff. So just to kind of give you an overview of what's going on here. Cool. All right. 
So we've got this here. Now, if we want to make this, again, look embedded, uh, like it's uh, correctly on the finger, we're going to have to rotate this thing around a bit, first of all. So we'll hit R, go into rotate, and we'll just pop that off. And we'll just kind of, we can anchor this thing here and rotate this thing around. And kind of embed that a little bit here. And I might also consider saving this little hole punch here for the end, because if you're gonna be moving this thing around, you're gonna be, I'm just gonna soften those edges just a tiny bit. There we go. And let's go ahead and see if we can pull this up just a tad. Stick this out here. And we'll turn our lazy mouse back on by tapping L. Pull those sides out, and then we'll use a clay brush to kind of build up to that. You can also use the Damien Standard brush. If you hold down Alt, you can pull up a ridge. Let's go ahead and crank that Lazy Razy yes, up for Damien Standard as well. So that'll kind of pull up a ridge, and then you can go back in with your clay brush and kind of build up to that ridge. And you also have smooth brush options where it'll um, not smooth to your edges there. So we'll just hold down, but we can just quickly hold down smooth as well, or H polish. You can kind of start dialing this in, smoothing it back. Let's change our smooth stronger up just a bit. And like I said, we can always continue to rebuild this stuff as needed. Um, we're still just kind of in the refined concept phase. I'm not too concerned about getting it right right off the bat. So we've got that built in. We can go back to this one here, turn on transparency with ghost turned on. And now we can just quickly, we can go in with a clay brush. Let's make sure we have back face masking turned on. Because again, we have a very thin thin mesh in here, so it's gonna wanna pull through based on your brush size here. Um, or you can just mask and inflate. If we mask this out, invert that, and then start inflating through that mask, we can do that. Um, but because we're just building up very slightly, and usually what I'll say is, you know, work at lower subdivision levels, and as you work your way up, you know, continue to subdivide and refine. Some There's some cases that's not true, hard surface being one of them and clothing being another. Um, sometimes it's better to divide up all the way through and then go in and um, refine. Just because, you know, you if you sculpt in a seam and it's kind of low res and then you subdivide it up, you're gonna have to go through and pinch it and, you know, keep going back and over the same line again and again and again. So sometimes it's worth just having that stuff done. Um, in our original concept, these were all on all the fingers, so I guess I can go ahead and do that. So we'll do W, Control Shift to move this over, and then we'll pop this thing out here, and we'll rotate it around. And I guess you could use like a ray mesh to kind of put this out and scale them if you'd want to. I'm just gonna do Control Shift here, and we'll just rotate as we go. Shift. There we go. Now, if I want to move these things quickly, I keep them in the same subtool, so they're you know they're all in one subtool. But if I make a move brush here, they're going to move all of those. So a couple different ways around that. One is auto masking topological, and now if you just click one, if it's not vert welded, it'll just move one of these things. Another option is we go into uh, polyframe here. When we dynamesh to kept all those poly groups here, if we hit Control W. It'll just make them all one group. If there's nothing mask, if there's something mask, it'll group mask, clear mask, and then polygroup here. Um, if we go to uh, your polygroup menu and do auto groups, anything that's not vert welded gets its own group. And then you can feel free to go up here to mask polygroups up to 100. And then anything that's its own polygroup, it'll just move that one. And that'll work uh, as well as, you know, tapping on here, or you can control tap, and that'll mask it if you want to see the mask. But you don't even need to mask in this case if you have that up. It'll just move this one here. So we'll grab this one and we'll rotate it around. And as we go down, we're probably gonna have to scale these down just a bit. So I'm gonna hit E and start scaling these down. Now, because we don't have an object over here, we don't need to turn on local symmetry. It'll be fine. So we kind of pull this one up and we'll scale this one down. We'll pull that up and we'll rotate this around here. Like so. one. 
rotate and scale. This one is fine, just maybe just needs a little rotation here. And then again, just a big move brush. And we'll just pop these things up as needed on the knuckle. And actually, let's scale this one down a little bit too. It's starting to interfere with that back piece I have built in there. Out and up, over. Not super exciting, but necessary, I suppose. Okay, we have knuckle detail in here. And if I was smart, if I wanted something to go in there, I would have done that first. Like, um, let's see, BI brush insert, Z modeler kit, where you put screws there if you want to do machine parts or uh, hardware, stuff like that. Hit M. And then if we wanted to put something in here like this, you could just go through here and just add that in there. Uh, if you wanted to be a little bit thinner, you can drop your Z intensity down and drop that in. Or, you know, you can keep your Z intensity up and then just hit W and then you can just hold down shift. Oh, turn the mass by polygroups down to zero. Hold down shift and you can kind of just dial in what depth you want. Uh, if you ever want to over crank it for any reason, you're going to want to go down here to your brush settings, modifiers. There we go. And if you do the strength multiplier, you can crank that up to like two and then rah, put a barrel in there. Let's see, everybody's still good. I bore everybody to death. Um, okay, we're coming up on eight o'clock, so I'm going to start heading out. Let's go ahead and uh, really quickly, we'll go in here with our standard brush and we'll turn on our transparency and we'll kind of build in this piece here, kind of make it look a little bit more embedded into the glove here. And the reason, again, I'm going into Ghost is so I can sculpt through. Uh, if you have that off, um, it'll sculpt around it well enough. Um, and it seems to be doing okay, but sometimes you'll run into issues like this where it starts interacting with the underlying mesh. You can use clay brush sometimes, and the clay brush is a little bit better. Uh, but I'm trying to get a very precise ridge, so I'm just going to do transparency and Ghost, which makes that object truly transparent to sculpting. So I can use my standard brush best of both worlds here. And we can go through here and just, and as we continue to subdivide, we'll continue to refine these transitions as well. Cool. And all that good stuff. So through here, we're going to put in some details when we get there. Let's see. Let's go back here to our so there's the one we popped off, which I guess we don't need that thing anymore. So here's our <laughs> just a microcosm of refined sculpts here. Um, here is our refined concept sculpt, so we'll delete that, don't need it anymore, because we have our newly built refined here. So we have our concept sculpt here we're still using to kind of dictate. So we're going to punch these things in here on the two odd fingers, uh, maybe put some plates or some rubber things over here, put a little rubber things on our fingertips, kind of the same process here. We'll finish these up next week. I think it'll be easy. We're getting close, just kind of going through here. And then as we subdivide, we can go through here and inflate along here if we want to. We can like put in a little, a uh, slight little ridge or even maybe even Davian standard if you want to pull out a um, more precise ridge. Or you can do control shift to grab that top part here, do control shift. Um, let's do control shift. S to shrink. So we'll kind of shrink back a couple and then we'll do control shift drag. What's the best way to do this? I want to grab these loops right here. Okay, here's one way we can do it. We can do control shift select lasso and we can go through here and just grab these two, invert that, and then we can mask, invert that, and um, if we just want to do it around those ones, we can just go ahead and let's do mask lasso here. We grabbed some stuff we didn't want. Um, actually, real quick, 
Um, we'll grab this one here. Eh, it's not going to work. We'll do this. We'll do... Okay, we'll do it this way. On the fly, Control-Shift-S to shrink, invert that, and then we'll just get rid of all these other polygroups here. Get rid of this, do this here. Solo mode. I just I just want that blue. Probably not the most elegant way to do it, but you know what? It works good enough. Okay, so we've got all of our blue pieces here. So now we can mask this and uh, bring everything back, invert that mask, and now we can just inflate um, through that mask to kind of get a little bit of a ridge. And you can also inflate in a decimal, so we can do like 0.25 inflate. And that'll go ahead and kind of inflate up around that edge if you want to. Or you can just use that mask to kind of sit there. And if you don't want to look at it, you can keep it masked but not have to see it by going in here to masking. Uh, turn on view mask, and that'll just keep you kind of, you know, you can still go through here with your standard brush, but if you accidentally like overshoot it a little bit, it's not going to be a big deal. So you can kind of just go in with your standard brush with that masked, and that'll just kind of keep you in line if you want to do that manually. Makes sense. Pretty good. Yeah, exactly. We can get to put a little Wolverine claw in there with our <laughs> overcranked uh, strength multiplier. All sorts of cool stuff you can do. Well, all right. I'm going to head out. I'm going to save this first because I'm notoriously bad at using my quick saves and not saving my actual files here. We'll do 09. We're good. Um, I'll see you guys this Thursday night on my channel or next Tuesday morning on Pixelogic's channel. Um, I might work on this on my channel too, just to kind of keep rolling through and get stuff done really quickly. And maybe even I'll just pop up on the weekends and just start streaming. Um, nothing set. Just so I can start making some headway on this thing. So I might do some do the whole music thing and just be like, hey, ask questions if you want, but I'll just be sculpting. So thanks for showing up, everybody. Cool. Have a good day, and I'm going to sign out.